more, more so to open to this uh, to the idea of um, of a solution like what what would it take to really make the day uh, open up with a lot of energy and 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 uh, and a good type of energy and inspiration so uh, and and repeat it again and again so I wanted to start with this with a small practice just kind of like an energy practice as we always start uh, and let's uh, put the hands on the heart and close your eyes. Just a little bit of a, a short kind of meditative practice. Breathe into your heart. And uh, look at the place behind your hands. Yeah, you're putting the hands on the chest, right at the heart center. Yeah, the heart center is located uh, just right in the center of the chest and, and you put your mind behind it and you take a breath into it and exhale from the mouth. And see if you can smile into the heart. Just visualize as if the heart is a, is a, is a baby, it's your baby. And uh, just give it a little bit of love and a little appreciation. Regardless of how we feel energetically, emotionally, you're just uh, taking care of your baby, of your kid that is in the center of your chest by tuning into it, by listening to it, by breathing, by smiling into it. Maybe some of you can hear the heartbeat. See if you can hear the heartbeat. And I want you to think about a few things that you're grateful for. Yeah, just maybe say five things that you're grateful for. And it, 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 it's very nice, something that happened today or you're currently experiencing. Could be, could be the temperature in the room, could be this very moment that you're having a moment of relaxation. So it could be happening right now. And that's a really nice way to connect with gratitude at this moment. Or that something happened between the morning as you, when you woke up and until now, that's noon. Let's open our attention to a bigger energy field that encompass the earth beneath us. Yeah, you can just put your attention on the earth beneath us. Not just the surface of the earth, but deeper inside of the earth. Just feel that big energy. It's we call it's an um, we we'll call it Gaia. Yeah, some people call it Gaia in different. Uh, yeah, so it's it's almost like a, a big entity, a living creature. And it's the earth always supports you. And that's in Taoist tradition, we say this is the ocean of yin energy, ocean of yin, of calm energy. So connect with it and also connect with the sky above you, beyond the ceiling of the room that you're in. And the, the sky, if you think about the sky, it brings us a sense of, of freedom of openness, of creativity. Yeah, whereas the earth brings us strength. You know, think about the earth is very solid. Yeah, that brings us solidity, brings us cohesiveness, brings us comfort and nourishment. All the food grows from the earth, while the sky brings us kind of inspiration, that lightness that we all wanna be associated with, that lightness of being and really, the practice, like we talked last time, is the harmonizing yin and yang, is to feel both and to be able to nourish yourself with both because you are in the middle between heaven and earth. Yeah, so feel these two elements. And then the, both heaven and earth are meeting at the horizon line. 
And the horizon line is where the heart opened to. Yeah, when we see the horizon, we're feeling calm and, and expansive. So we can see it with our, with our eye, we can see it with our vision, uh, the horizon where the earth and the heaven meet, and that's the Tao. That's the combination of yin and yang, and that's connection to the heart. The heart is uh, the, the uh, element of connectivity. The connection happens with the heart. So uh, the heart is how do we connect into our day? So when we start to talk about how do we start the day, how do you connect through the heart? How do we connect to the day? And that's the job of the heart. Yeah, so... Uh, so let's open the hands and open the eyes, bring yourself to the present moment, beautiful. And um, yeah, so I can share a little bit about a morning practice uh, and really morning practice, and then we can open it to discussions and maybe you can share also about your, your ideas about it. Yeah, you, uh, what, what helps you or what you discovered on your own. Uh, it's an interesting thing, you know, waking up in the morning, how do we, wake up with good energy. How do we, some, some days go so well and we feel so productive and proud of ourselves, And some days do not. Some days we, we kind of soldier through them. And, and not that there's, this is good or bad, but how do we, how do we get a, a jump start, a good jump start? And this, is, this is, has to do with the heart. How do we connect to the day to begin with? And really the day starts from last night. So how, the way we, we uh, sleep uh, the way we sleep uh, kind of dictates also about the day. So this day starts, so there's no, be the beginning start from the end and the end from the, and this is a very Taoist concept of the circle uh, that uh, there's really no beginning and no end. <clears throat> but if we think about how can we start the morning is again from a good night's sleep. We, we just had the uh, sleep workshop last uh, couple of weeks ago. I think last week, actually last weekend. It was very powerful, but uh, the way to think about today, this day is from uh, like before you're going to bed and you can, uh, this is for my own discovery <clears throat> and uh, you know, how do we, so a lot of people keep journal. Journal is, is a very powerful way to uh, set intention for the day, the night before. So how do we plan the day? Uh, and Qigong, we say it's not only like what you want to, do today or what the task but what type of energy you choose to feel like how do you want to feel doing these practices and one thing that we always say in chinese medicine qigong just lifestyle in general is to schedule something in every day that is you feel joyful about so it could be just a long hot shower <laughs> or it could be a walk in your favorite place but do something that you do it for yourself and immerse in that and in, in, in lo lo loving to do it very much and don't, don't feel guilty about doing it. Yeah. So, uh, so a lot of people are really working hard all day long and to schedule something that is your time, it's something that you're looking forward to it. That's very important. But also the way you connect with, your, uh, with the task to do is very, very important. Uh, we always begin the day so that we see a beginning of the day as a beginning of, uh, of a life. Beginning of a life, yeah, it could be a beginning of a year, could be a beginning of a lifetime uh, in a person, could be beginning of a week, beginning of a day. You see how the, the microcosm and being, you know, it's just, it's just different scales of beginnings. And our lifetime is, is like, it's it's metaphoric for a day. So the day starts, it's like the beginning of the day. So the few hours in the morning are very crucial to, to somebody's, yeah, so the baby, whatever the baby absorb in the three first year, they say it's very crucial. So if he experienced traumatic, uh, you know, something in childhood, that would be hard to heal. But so what we want to, so the beginning of the day is very, very important. So you want to, in the beginning of the day, to focus on gratitude, to start with deep breathing. Yeah, we had a, we had a, 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 a group practice that we kind of learn techniques about how to start the day. And really the most important thing 
is with deep breathing and with, uh, with gratitude and with setting the intention for the day and connecting with the heart, you know? And it's very nice to start the day with, with breath because the breath is the first thing. If you think about it, when a baby is born, the first thing he does is taking a breath in. That's the first thing. The baby come out of the, the womb and the first thing is taking a breath in. So breath is very essential. <laughs> and then starting with deep breathing and with intention and with heart connection and to see, you know, in the beginning, the day through the end of the day or through what will happen today and, how, and ask the question, what would make me feel accomplished or proud? And usually proud, you know, if your intention, if your actions are in line with your intention, you're feeling proud. This is what, this is what accomplishment feels like if your action are following your intentions. So what is important to you? What would you, what is the most important to you? And how could you be how could you, how could you uh, schedule it during the day? And sometimes you want to ask the question in the beginning of the day. So all these questions in the beginning of the day would be very powerful. In the beginning of the day, ask the question, you know, that's very helpful for me too, uh, what you need to do less of. <laughs> what you need to do. So it's not like what, what uh, you need to, do less of think is it a thought is it something that you do every day that you want to do a little less of uh that does not support your energy what today do i want to uh what, what I, I prefer not to put my energy on so that's very very powerful uh, as well and sometimes more powerful than what i want the day to be because when we have um not helpful habits and maybe it's a reaction to something like how do we react to life circumstance or how do we react to the day and or you know i, I don't know maybe you need less time on your uh, on the screen uh so what we want less of and what we want more of and keep it very simple like few questions like that in the beginning of the day deep breathing drinking glass of water yeah we we talk about start a day with water rather than food movement is very important. One thing that really, uh, the reason that I put together the Good Morning Qigong, that whole sequence uh, is to, to do that. And what we're going to add to the Good Morning Qigong is, uh, is, a, is a talk similar to this, but a little bit more in detail of what, what really would make a, a morning a perfect morning. So I, I know some of you were in the... <laughs> uh, in the good morning to Jeff, you were in good morning to Qigong and Marty, you were there. Uh, so starting the day with movement and a specific type of movement that can reduce inflammation. Uh, so how do we move in the morning? What movement practice you choose to do? Do you choose to lift weight? Do you choose to jog? Uh, in Qigong, it's very important to do a practice that opens the joint, lubricate the joints, incorporate deep breathing, and very softness, that softness, that soft movement in the beginning of the day would give the day that softness that you wish to have, that calmness that you wish to have. So if we're talking about a physical practice, the, for instance, that do good morning Qigong practice that I have uh, online, uh, and, and you can purchase if you don't have it and see it or join our classes, it's a really nice practice to lubricate the joint, to deepening the breath into areas that you haven't been as a very soft, relaxed practice and really, really uh, <laughs> uh, bring up your energy to a higher level. So, uh, so this is few thoughts that I have uh, and, uh, and I can continue to talk, but I wanted to also open it, the conversation to whoever wanna jump in and share their own ideas about it, or ask question that is has to do with their own, with their own health and healing. Whatever you, whatever you feel like you want to do, this is uh, this is your time. So I'd like to kind of um, see what comes up for you, uh, and um, and see if you'd like to uh, to talk. And I see Jeff, you are unmuted yourself. Yeah. 
If so it uh, to talk. Uh, go ahead. Okay, I have, I have, I have an observation or, that I would like. I just can you hear me? Unmuted yourself because you unmuted yourself. <laughs> you can, can you hear me? Okay. So, who who wants to who wants to chime in or to ask a question about this? Uh, if there's no question, I'll can continue. Yeah, I have a I have a, a question. Raise your hand, or kind of chime in somehow. Let's see. Um, are you yeah, not hearing you me? Want to say something? Yeah. Do you, can you hear me or not? No. no. Uh, Marty. Yeah. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. Or do I have to unmute you? Let me see. You know, I, I'm going to say Jeff wants to say something, but can everybody hear him? I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? I hear you, Jeff. Oh, okay. <laughs> but do you, do you hear him? Ailey doesn't hear me somehow. Oh, I hear you now, Jeff. Oh, okay. So, so it's it's an observation, but I'd like your your advice, your comment on it. So, <clears throat> both my wife and I have um, some low grade increased blood pressure. Uh huh. Um, what we've noticed is that yeah, we did it this morning. That this morning we we took our blood pressure after the qigong practice, and it dropped it into at the end of the morning practice. We were in normal range. Beautiful. So, so that's really lovely. But obviously, 24 hours a day, we can't do Qigong. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so how, do we, how do we benefit? How do we extend the benefit? Because we can't do Qigong 24 hours a day. Uh -huh. Did you, I have a question for you. Did you check in the morning that you do Qigong in the morning? Did you check your blood pressure that day throughout the day? Yeah, so we, we, we checked it before we did Qigong, and it was, it was the normal elevated level. And then we checked it after we did Qigong this morning. And, and, and what about checking it later in the day? Uh, no, we, we'll, we haven't tried that yet to see if it's, yeah, we should do that to see if, it, uh, if it's persisted or not. Yeah, that would be interesting to know. If you, if you, if you maintain that, like if you would do everyday Qigong, if you yeah. would see the same benefit, like if, if it would be uh, reduced throughout the day, or is it just uh, how many hours after? Because it's really interesting, right? Yeah. Because you have this m uh, machine that you can check, and that, that's a great feedback, by the way, um, you know, for uh, what, what we're doing here. And, uh, you know, and I, I had the chance to work with a few other people that, like, were in the hospitals and, and, and tried all kinds of uh, Qigong uh, routines and, and so how their health is being improved by monitoring it at uh, different devices. So this is, this is really powerful stuff. There is a practice that you can do with your mind to actually reduce blood pressure. So um, uh, this is something that I usually work one-on-one -on -one with people. And uh, I could, I mean, if you'd like to, we can do like a, a meeting and I can just teach you that practice. It's something that you, sure, we could so, do. yeah. So you don't, you don't have to do Qigong all, all the time. If, if you see that uh, after a few hours, maybe your blood levels go up again, I can help you with that. So it's, it's more like a medical Qigong practice that you do with your own mind throughout the day and it will keep your your heart levels at a, at a good range okay and i'll email you we can set something up yeah that's it's pretty simple actually okay. it's, a, it's right. a very simple and powerful practice so right. so that's a more of an internal medical qigong practice that is is very powerful i worked with a guy that uh that did that really worked great Thank you. So, so yeah, I'd love to support you. If you'd like, just shoot me an email. I, I can, I can teach you one on one that practice. Okay. But I, I'd be curious to see how, how many hours after that, that so, state is, uh, is improved. You know what I mean? Yeah. She said she just did hers and said it's, it's back up. Uh, so, so say it again. Uh, uh, my wife just took hers and she said it's back up. So um, this is now. Um, what four hours later or three hours three, later three, three hours three. later yeah help you with that i can definitely help you with that yeah. okay great uh 
Awesome. Good. Yeah, that's great. That's great for everybody to hear and uh, encourage them to really practice. It's really good for your heart, good for your energy. And I recently also talked with another person that told me that it's very good for osteoporosis. Uh, so an arthritis. So that's, uh, so th that's amazing. Uh, so what, what, who else has a question? Yes. Go ahead, Sharon. It's really great to see you live. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I want to just highly recommend who, who those who have not tried this is your Qigong for Resilience course. Um, um, expanding into the horizon, the opening of the lung and the spine. I'm doing this practice with regularity and I find it to be incredibly beneficial to waking up and starting the day. Nice, nice. And this practice is the, is the oh, the resilience. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. That's a really, really powerful one. Yeah, so this has to do with the lungs and opening the lungs. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend. I actually created that sequence uh, and it's, it's, it's really powerful. I created the sequence when COVID started. Yes. And, and, and offered it in a pretty kind of like deeper discount. It's, it's, it's not that, it's like $22, I think, or something like that. But it's, it has videos. It's, wor that, it's worth its weight. Believe me, it's great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sharon. Yeah. So, so that I'm glad to get feedback on this one. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. If you, uh, yeah, that's, that's great. So Qigong for resilience, really, really good for your immune system, really good for lung capacity, uh, good for overall calm level, right? What, are, what benefit do you get from it? Oh, just a grounding, a real centering, you know, this, the spinal work, also, mm -hmm. and I love the windmill. Oh yeah, the windmill <laughs> is our favorite. <laughs> Just really take off with that, yeah. Yes, yes, and what's nice, it's, it's pretty simple, so you can actually remember after a while the practices and do it wherever you, you know, on your own and kind of like make it your own, so that's, that's really but Just great. right in the beginning, you do a um, uh, expanding into the horizon, it's really brief and it's spot on. So thank you awesome. so much. Great, awesome, thank you, Sharon. All right, good, we're getting some chi moving here. <laughs> Who else wants to ask a question? Morning, morning routine, what works for you? Okay, hi, Edward, yes. Go How are you doing? So, um, you know, going back to what Sharon said, First of all, I always like listening because I always pick up something new from you. And today, you know, thanks to Jeff and, and you, it's the blood pressure. And thank God my blood pressure is normal, but I like to keep everything in check. So going through the six-week course was probably one of the most phenomenal things. I'm sleeping eight, nine hours a day. I jump up out of bed. I do yeah. my breathing. I do the windmill. I drink two glasses of water. And I look forward to going downstairs and juicing for 15 minutes and putting all the <laughs> vegetables out. And I really want to get up and then to make my toast with the hemp and the chia seeds. So I look so forward. And today, because I was back and forth with you too, but I had like five incredible phone calls. One was from someone you're working with and how great he sounded and how his cancer is shrinking and, and, and all that. And it was like, from my son to my niece to my friend up in Oregon. It was like everybody just chimed in and it took me two hours to get out of the kitchen this morning for breakfast. But <laughs> it really energizes my day and it really makes a big difference. And again, at night, I, after I do some exercise before I get into bed, and I fall asleep quickly, but I do deep breathing in and out through my nose and I say to myself, how can you fall asleep? You're so conscious of doing this. And I'm gone. I'm out. I just you know, fall asleep. And I'm doing eight, nine hours after your course a night. And it makes a difference. It's unbelievable. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is, this is great. Just for those of you, uh, we did a six uh, week, uh, it was the first kind of group program intensive 
that we kind of taught a, a more higher level practice, uh, breath practice, Taoist breath practice. And the idea is to uh, really cult cultivate over time a different connection between the lungs and the brain. It was really, really powerful. We had fun. We're going to probably repeat it in the fall. Uh, you know, it's a personal resilient course. Uh, we're going to do it more like three months this time, I think. But uh, Edward, you were on it. It was the first time I launched it. And the first time I, I, I taught pub publicly things that are more teach one-on-one. -on -one. It was really powerful, powerful course. I was, I was loving it too. I was like immersed in, in practices that I haven't practiced in a while too. And that was really powerful. Yeah, so... Um, so, you know, we're coming to a close. <laughs> we decided to do this uh, talk for half an hour, but thank you so much for sharing your wonderful experience with Qigong. And thank you, Jeff, for your, for your question. I, I'd love to support you further. Um, very simple stuff. Uh, it's, it's really about, uh, you know, I, I also take a course in, in Kabbalah now, which is uh, Jewish mysticism. And it's very interesting to find the, connection between Taoist and, and Jewish mysticism is very similar. And they're talking about the light and how when we are in a space of gratitude and love, uh, the light comes in, you know, they're talking about the light. And in Qigong, in medical Qigong, we're talking about the light that heals. And in Kabbalah, they talk about letting more light, the, the God light, the divine light in through, through uh, really looking at your reactivity and uh changing it so really being uh being in in the uh and they put more attention on on how do we react to things and how do we become aware of it first and how we change our reaction into a space of love and and and, and gratitude and giving so it's, it's really similar um, i'm just fascinated by how all these traditions <laughs> are really talking about the same things in a different way uh, but yeah, I just wanted to share that, that, that we increase the light frequency in our own heart, in our own body by opening, by accepting whatever comes our way with embracing everything and, and trusting that every, everything is a, in, in a pro, we are in a process. If you haven't reached, uh, if you feel, still feel uh, triggered or you're still in the process and embracing the process that you're in, embracing the embracing and and really uh, accepting everything that comes your way and cultivating love and giving that's way to increase the internal light so i guess that that few words were kind of a mixture of kabbalah and taoism <laughs> just to inspire you uh a little further uh, i really highly recommend taking a, a kabbalah course too but uh yeah do the your qigong practice and come to class uh it's it's really great to see you all and i'm really grateful for this venue that we created and to see more people on it so um bring your friends too and every time will be a different subject so until next time thank you so much let's bring the hands together like this and and place it on the uh, sea of tranquility point right between on the chest bone this point is uh it's called it the sea of tranquility point and you it's very nice because you're closing the hands the hands are the energy of your uh, your healing energy the heart energy and the knuckles of the thumb are pressing on the on the sternum and feel that feel that pressure on the sternum and breathe into this area and just feel the love in your heart because underneath all the emotions there's joy and love and the joy and love is always there we say it's kind of like the sun is always shining even it's a cloudy day you know that the sun is there so in this practice we look beyond all our judgment or emotions or different things and we look deeply into the sun into the love, into the heart in our heart, into the love in our heart. And you breathe into it and kind of stoke the fire. You know, when you breathe, when you put more oxygen into the fire, it stokes the fire. So breathe love and light into your heart. No matter what.
Nice. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much. Uh, let's finish with this meditation and you can continue it on your own and with the visualization. Thank you guys so much for joining and I'll see you in class or in workshop or here again next week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.